funny thing about this particular profile, I looked everywhere on my hard disks, on my, uh, on my storage, and I couldn't find a master for the Tatewaki Kuno original profile. So I don't think I have one. So I had to go to the, uh, the old DVD to retrieve it. So what you're seeing here is a copy. But um, anyways, this is your good buddy DJ Clive, the Ronmo one half character profile guy. Um, and today we're slumming it. We're going to look at the first two profiles I ever did. And these will be unlike any profiles you will see from here on in. Um, Cause these were done with absolutely different equipment, very archaic equipment uh, back in the day. What you're seeing here, this horrible video quality is not just VHS, but it's, it's bootlegged VHS. So that would explain like the horrible copy of a copy of a copy quality of this. Not to mention that back then, you know, it wasn't the computer age. Um, computers weren't readily available in every home. Well, I had one. I, it was called a Commodore 64, and it wasn't really good at doing editing. Um, so what I had to do was I had I did the old-fashioned way. I had two VCRs connected to each other, and um, I did all my editing just from recording and pausing and recording and pausing uh, from one tape to another. And then what I I had a um, a camera that had an audio dub function and I was able to feed the uh, the new finished video through that and um, and dub it that way. Now obviously with the audio dub function on a camera you don't have access to different layers of audio and video. I had to do it all in one fell swoop and like I said before I had to do it using very ramshackle methods. For the music I had a box radio with a double tape deck and I just taped a bunch of different songs quickly, a bunch of clips of songs, and placed them back to back for my soundtrack. And I had that blaring in the background the whole while, while I was um, delivering the dialogue. Um, I had the script in front of me, it was a very uncomfortable situation, because the, the music was blaring, I had to yell over it, and I had to do it all in one go. Um, that means no mistakes, and... For me to even think about doing that kind of thing now, it's mind-boggling because I make so many mistakes. I'm, I'm not the talker I used to be, I guess. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, back then, this is the way you did things, you know. You had an idea in your head and you had to try to make it happen, you know, with the limited resources you had. Um, and, you know, the end result is, you know, back in the day, I thought this was awesome, you know, that I could do stuff like this. But you go back and look at it now with, you know, now we're in the computer age and it's just like, like I said before, slumming it. And um, that's a big reason why I went back and redid this one later, because I couldn't just let a big character like Tate Waki Kuno be relegated to such a, uh, a piss poor product. And I think for the most part it came out pretty good for the time. I mean, besides the fact that I messed up the uh, the being lacked and lost line at the end. And coming up, you're going to see the effects of time on the uh, the video cassette. And this really breaks my heart. When I went back and posted this, I'm like, oh, come on. I can't believe this is happening. This is the only copy of this I have. And look at the wrinkles in the tape. Um, but I posted it anyway. Um, and thus my journey began. And now we move from the Tatewaki Kuno profile to the Dr. Tofu profile. Um, very strange choice, um, but you know, back then it was my intention to do all the characters like this, and I wanted to do a little bit of a mix as far as an action character, and then this was a, a, a little bit of a slower character to do. Um, a lot different musical choices in this one. Um, a lot of instrumental jazz and silly songs. Not really too much else to say about this one. It was done with the same methods as the Tate Waki Kuno profile. This is actually the third one I did like this. Even before the Tate Waki Kuno profile, I had a profile on Ryoga Hibiki that I never posted. Um, most At the time, it was because there was wrinkles in the tape and that I didn't think it was fit to post because the, the sound levels were all off. But right now, this profile is on an unmarked tape in my archives. Um, let's just call it the Bravo Vault. It's in there. It's buried in tapes. I have no idea where it is. So, kind of a cool way to think about it, that there is a lost character profile out there. 
um, that maybe one day I'll find and post as a as a little extra. Um, but that's down the road. I'd have to do some major uh, monkey work to try to find that thing. So yeah, these are the first character profiles that I ever posted up on YouTube. And I posted them with a bunch of different Bravo videos that I did. I was always into making movies and I always wanted to get them seen. Um, for the longest time I wanted to try to get them on public access, but when YouTube rolled around I was like, I was all on that and I posted a bunch of different stuff. And I was always into Ranma one half and I had all these bootlegs and at the end of every bootleg I put a, um, you know, a character profile, like one of these mongrel character profiles at the end as a way to round up the tape. And... You know, just for, for S's and giggles, I decided to, to put this up on uh, on YouTube, these two, and they actually started to get some hits. Um, my other videos weren't really necessarily, like, being searched for, because, you know, there was all original stuff. Who would even know to search for that stuff? But, um, but these were the only things that consistently got hits, and somebody by the name of Zwaxman told me or just put out the uh, the idea that I should try to make some more of these things. So the year was 2007, quite a ways from 1993, and um, I decided to undergo the journey all over again. And let me tell you, it's all engrossing. It's all I think about night and day is what I'm going to do next. Oh, and speaking of night and day, you might be noticing the different quality that just all of a sudden pops up here. It's a lot clearer than it used to be. Well, you're actually witnessing me first learning how to use my new editing equipment. I had to redo the whole ending to the Dr. Tofu profile because as bad as the static was at the end of the Tatewaki Kuno profile, the static at the end of the to Dr. Tofu profile was a lot worse. And it was so bad that, that it marred the whole ending of the profile and the ending was probably the best part of the profile. So I had to go and redo it. Of course, the quality still isn't as good as it could be because at the time I made that profile, I still only had these episodes on VHS. I didn't have them on DVD until much later. And this profile, the one you're seeing right now, the Kieran profile, there is no other profile that is as obvious that this is all on VHS. Um, the screen jumps, the screen jitters, there's static at the bottom of the screen. No bones about it, this is a very messy looking profile, which is a shame because this is when I really started to gain some technique as far as editing goes. Like it wasn't just a straightforward profile, I, I was using some tricks here and there. Like what you're seeing right now, um, the whole setup, me uh, leading up to talking about Kieran, uh, was something that I, I didn't do until now. Usually it was just a straightforward profile, I start talking about the character, I end talking about the character. And this was filmed more like a, a movie trailer, um, or maybe even in the style of a, a music video. Um, this is about the time where I discovered the, the German group A Nomine, which has very orchestral music and just very eloquent and very dramatic sounding music, which I constantly am dipping back into um, for, for characters of this type, like, um, like Pantyhose Taro and like, like Ryoga. I, they're, you know, a nominee is perfect for all of them. So I request if anybody's getting into uh, making videos about anime and whatnot, always look up a nominee. They're a very hard group to find, but trust me, it'll be worth your while. Now this profile is probably the shortest one that I've ever made, even shorter than the Dojo Destroyer one, which is a sin. <laughs> but um, but I kind of uh redeemed this profile when I did the Seven Lucky Gods because I didn't squelch on Kieran. He got a full explanation. Except for the whole thing with the, the rice and pickled vegetables. I never really got into that. But not that that's really a needed thing to talk about because that was one of my least favorite parts of his character. Quite boring, I thought. And it's very strange because there is a lot to his character. You wouldn't think that this would be so short. But, um, yeah, and I even go into the Seven Lucky Gods briefly, so a lot of his character is taken away by that. So, poor Kieran kind of got the short end of the chopstick on this one, but, you know, like I said, I got, I went back and I redeemed him. Now, this actually isn't the first profile I did out of the gate after, um, you know, after I posted the Dr. Tofu and Tate Waki Kuno profile. This is actually the third new one that I did, um... I did Moose followed by Subasa Kuranai, 
and then I did um, Kirin. With Moose and Tsubasa, I learned a few basic techniques as far as fading in and out and, and editing um, a video together. But with this one, you could see that I was really just having fun and playing around with my equipment. Um, adding all sorts of fades and effects, maybe where they don't even belong, but um, you know, it's like a child using Window Movie Maker for the first time. Um, I admit that I'm guilty of that, that I was just, you know, having fun for fun's sake, but at the same time I was putting together this profile, even before I had an ironclad script, which is very, very strange for me. I always write a script before I, I tackle a profile. And this one, it was just me making it up as I was going along. And it was just a blast for me. Um, just being able to, to come up with a video that, you know, at the time looked so good. And you might be thinking to yourself, hey, what's he talking about? This looks like utter crap. Well, yeah, looking back on it now, it looks kind of crappy, but you got to understand that I w at the time I was used to doing editing through, you know, VCR to VCR transfers and um, doing voiceovers through an audio dub function on a camera. It was so bare bones to make a movie that actually looked like a movie. I mean, this was amazing. I and mean, it makes me wish that I had my youth back while we had access to all this stuff because I couldn't imagine the, the live action movies I could have put together. But through Ranma, I have found my last hurrah and um, this is how I'm going to end my legacy, I guess you'd call it that. Um, you know, just so I'm doing something. You know, I might not be young enough, the, the spring chicken I used to be, to be do going out there and doing live action movies, but at least I have Ranma, and I'll always have Ranma. Um, so that ends yet another edition of Ranma One Half Character Profile Commentaries. This was very interesting to go back and look at these old projects of mine. And who'd have ever thought that we'd be where we're at right now? Just a few profiles away from Ranma Sautome himself. Hoo-wee! It's been quite the ride. But anyway, this is Ranma One Half, the character profile guy, bidding you all adieu for this week. Um, continue to tune into Daily Motion for more character profile commentaries. And I'm out. Life is Ranma, guys. <laughs>